We're live here in the beautiful set of Vegas Life TV studio designed by international fashion designer David Tupas. And this is Vegas Vibes, a weekly TV show that gives you a peek at what's grooving and brewing in the music pageantry and live production scenes in and around the Vegas Valley. On Vegas Vibes, we love Las Vegas. We call it the awesome city, known as the entertainment capital of the world. Las Vegas is one of the world's best destinations with mega concerts and conventions, all nestled in the best resorts in the globe. Las Vegas is truly a global brand, yet not too many people really know how wonderful this city is and its people are. And this is what my show is all about. I'm your host, Esmeralda Padilla Gold. Stay with me. On Vegas Vibes, I'll be featuring amazingly talented people from many walks of life who contribute to making Las Vegas a unique global brand. And on that note, here with us today are Sally Olson and Ned Mills, stars of Carpenter's Tribute Concert. Hello, welcome to Vegas Vibes. Hi. Thanks for having us. It's such a pleasure having you, and yeah. thank you. Well, I first met you on the set of Music Planet, and I must say everybody were like amazed by your performance. Everybody were on their feet, holding their phones, taking a video of you, and yeah. selfies with you. I was yeah. like, wow, amazing. Yeah. But please tell us um, about your humble beginnings. Uh, where were you born, and where did you grow up? All right. I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. Ladies first. Sure. Ladies yes. first. Yeah. Um, I'm originally from Vermont, and and um, prior to moving to Las Vegas, which was actually only um, just less than two years ago, um, I had been performing as Karen Carpenter for about five or so years. And that all came about because I decided that I wanted to do a one-woman show. But at the time, I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. And I was uh, reading through music and having always really loved the music of the 60s and 70s, um, I started reading through Carpenter's music. and. I felt like it was a really good fit. Um, not just, I love the songs, but also Karen's vocal range is, mine is the same as hers, so that was a very good fit. And um, I, I did my first show in January of 2015. And then over the years it evolved and um, I kept on developing it. And so it was about two, two years ago, um, Actually, it'll be three years ago, I did my show in New York City at the Triad Theater, and there was an individual who came to that show who was very um, touched by my performance and impressed, and he said he would be in touch. And I was like, oh, okay. And then I didn't think too much about it, and then a couple months went by, and he did get in touch with me, and he said that he had some ideas, and he, uh, his childhood friend, um, a former showgirl uh, who currently lives in Las Vegas, wanted to talk to me later that evening. And so between the two of them, they suggested that I make the trip out to Las Vegas and audition for Legends in Concert. Um, and so I made uh, plans to visit Las Vegas for the first time in January of 2018. And it was on that trip that I met Ned. And oh. I was already thinking about the fact that I needed, I really needed a Richard Carpenter in my show to take it to the next level. Because it wasn't just Karen, it was the Carpenters, as you know. Right. So. Mm -hmm. How about you, Ned? Uh, where were you born? Uh, where did you grow up? I'm, I'm from the East Coast. I was born in Charleston, South Carolina, and was raised in, near Wilmington, North Carolina, out in the country. And so my accent's worn off a little bit. I used to have a southern accent, really thick. And uh, was torn between trumpet and piano as a kid. I started playing piano when I was four years old. And uh, went through the marching band and that sort of thing. I took piano lessons for four years from second grade to sixth grade. And when I graduated, I was torn between either math, music, or engineering. Mm -hmm. And But if I decided if I majored in music, I only had to count the four. <laughs> so so uh, I was a trumpet major and went to East Carolina for two years. And then I transferred to North Texas State 
uh, near Dallas, Texas, and got my degree in jazz arranging with a minor in classical piano. And uh, after I graduated, I worked cruise ships for a while, saw the world, and then I went back to North Carolina, worked there for a while in the Wilmington area, I did a couple of uh, small films, movies over there. And then um, went to Hawaii. What kind of movies? A, a little bit, very, very small. And uh, Wilmington has a uh, small movie studio that um, when they have a scene, like in a restaurant or a movie scene where they need the piano player in there, mm -hmm. I was the person they would call to do that sort of thing. And uh, I've been in Matlock. I gave a piano lesson to Halle Berry for a film once, and I was a piano trainer for a lot of actors that needed to look like they could play the piano. And um, so then I, uh, I moved, uh, um, I got a call to work in Hawaii and uh, was music director for American Hawaii Cruise Lines. And then after that, I was kind of like, well, where do I want to go with my life? And I decided to take the plunge. Everyone kept talking about Las Vegas. And so I took the plunge. I visited there and fell in love with the city. And so I went back home, packed up everything and moved. And this May will be my 20th anniversary. Oh, wow. In Las Vegas. And so uh, I did, uh, I have my own show that I do occasionally called Piano Follies. It has everything from tributes to Liberace, Victor Borga, Jerry Lee Lewis, rock and roll, classical, everything. And I've done that on cruise ships and stuff. So when I met Sally and she sat in, I was like, wow, this, this would be a great team, I think, you know. And so we clicked and I used my arranging skills to write the music for the show. And that's when we both came to the same conclusion without even discussing that, that let's make this uh, Carpenter show unique in that it's performing as Karen and Richard, which mm -hmm. I had to learn how to become Richard, you know, or attempt to. And let's make it based on their live show. You know. In 1976. Yes. Yeah, and that, I had had that idea, and I started phasing things into the show before I met Ned, things that I was able to do, but I really needed somebody like Ned with his arranging yeah. skills yeah. to complete the project. Yeah. And so it was just, it was very interesting that he had that mm -hmm. same idea for the yeah. show before I even told yeah, him. Yeah, there, there, there are other tributes out there, but most of them don't have, it's, it's based on Karen only, right. without Richard. And they perform the songs, and many of them do it very well, but they don't do it in character as Karen and, and Richard. with Richard. Yeah. The other interesting uh, added bonus that we added to the show, because I'm a trumpet player, um, A&M Records founded the Carpenters, and the A of A&M Records is Herb Alpert, the trumpet player. Mm -hmm. And so I open for myself, we open our show with a tribute to Herb Alpert and the Tijuana Brass. And so I do three trumpet features before I quickly transform from <laughs> Herb into Richard and do the show. So there's a lot of something for everybody in the show. So what was the event that, or what was the catalyst that made you decide, oh, you want to make music together. What was that instant event? I think Do you it, remember? Um, specifically, I mean, it was, it definitely must have been on my first trip here when we met. Um, yeah. I, it so was yeah. almost instantly because <laughs> I was performing at a small club in Vegas called the Tap House and I met her there and she sat in. And I listened to it, I was like, wow, this is So you special. first heard her sing, and you fell in love with the voice. Yeah. That's, and you knew that. Yeah. And yeah. I was actually yeah. scheduled to, to sit in with other pianists that week, but Ned was the first one, and he was like, no, 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 I'll, I'll play for you the rest of the week. So yeah, he so was the then, first and the last. Yeah, and then <laughs> I, I had another venue, two or three other venues later the week, and so she I invited her and she accepted and so that was that was it you know so we've been working together ever since interesting and what made you choose Karen Carr I, I know you have told me about that yeah um, but what really is was she your uh where, where have you been a fan for all your life or? I, yeah I've been a Carpenters fan but I didn't really pay as much attention to Carpenters specifically until about uh, six years ago when I started working on this, um, what was at the time a one-woman show. Prior to that, um, growing up uh, middle school and all throughout high school, even though I was a child of like the, the 80s and the 90s, I would always like pretty much strictly just listen to oldies music, so 60s and 70s, and that, that was my thing, and I would... Um, also, my, my wardrobe consisted mainly of vintage clothes, 
much to my mother's dismay a lot of the time. <laughs> all so the, do you create the your polyester. Own, what's that? Do you create your own, your own uh, wardrobe? For the show? For the show. Yes, yes. So it's interesting. So those interests that I had when I was young um, really, I, at the time I wouldn't have known that it would influence directly influence the show and so now I have this um, outlet that is the show for my you know musical interests and then also wardrobe um, you know, just the whole artistic design end of things so yes uh, all the costumes in the show are um, exact replicas of the outfits and costumes that Karen and Richard wore um, in the 19 in their 1976 shows how about you, Richard? Did it, I'm sorry. <laughs> did, it feel, did it come easy to you, um, impersonating or being Richard? Uh, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had. No, that's a very good question. Um, the. Uh, like most people, I had a basic layman's knowledge of the Carpenters. We've all heard the big hits, Close mm -hmm. to You, Top of the World. and uh, But like most people, I really did not know to the extent of Richard's talent. I knew that he was the other half of the Carpenters. I knew that he was her brother and he played the piano. But when I started to dig in and peel the layers away, I went, oh my God, he was a tremendous jazz pianist and a lot of people don't know that before their first hit uh, came out in 1970 that they won Battle of the Bands as a jazz combo. Their bass player sometimes played the tuba. They, they had this whole different sound nobody was in. Karen was playing the drums and for an uh, early part of their career she would sing and play drums at the same time. So when I was analyzing what he was doing, and particularly the live shows, um, I really had to step up my game. Uh, he does this big classical piano feature. He has another moment where, um, Freudian slip moment, Karen sings from this moment on while he plays a Bach invention. Mm -hmm. And I like to say my Bach is worse than my bite. <laughs> but I had a lot of work in front of me. It is a very complicated show for us, that particularly the tributes to Burt Bacharach that we do in the show and my classical feature, I do an excerpt from Gershwin's Rhapsody in Blue. And I had to work very hard in very short order. Um, I will have to say, um, I've, um, I've been music director for a lot of shows in Vegas over the past 20 years. I've, I've worked with a lot of uh, the local and national legends. Uh, I've worked with uh, Don Rickles. I've worked with Joan Rivers. Um, uh, and a lot of these acts, uh, as a writer is one thing, but as a player, you really have to, you know, step up your game. And, uh, but, but when I jumped into the Richard thing, I had no idea. I was like, oh my God, I really have to, to do this. This is, of, of all the shows I've ever played, this has been probably the most difficult, but the most rewarding for me to learn. So what play. do you admire most about him and the work that he has done? That's almost an essay question too. It would be hard to put it on one thing because the, his technical ability is great. There's so many things that he does not get enough credit for. Now he's still, he's 73 years young right now. He just released another album with the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra a year ago. And uh, he was the one who made the decision on selecting the songs. He wrote, uh, he composed a lot of the songs. He collaborated with John Bettis on a lot of this. And um, of course he was a gifted singer. Uh, it's, it's really hard. He was almost like a modern Leonardo da Vinci, a man of all different things. His scoring, his arranging skills, when we go in the studio, we, we have to learn how to recreate that sound. We're working on a, a CD right now. And to become that and to try to do that is some very big shoes to fill. But just overall, his musicianship, he is truly a musical genius. So how has that influenced you or how is that, uh, how did you evolve as an artist? I, I would have to say that my, my Bach is a lot better than it used to be. <laughs> it's, it's like, at heart for me, I, I am a jazz pianist. And, uh, but Richard was, you know, uh, 
Oh my God, he could, I can't even think of the words for it. But he's not only a jazz pianist, he was a classical pianist as well. I've studied classical, uh, I, I do some of it, but I've had to work extremely hard to, to step up to that game. And it, it's, it's made me a better, a, a, definitely a better musician for it. I've had to be a lot more organized with that because now as music director for the show, uh, I'm proud to say that we had the best problem. Our show in this concept is less than a year old. It's hard to believe. We've sold out coming up this weekend. Will be our 12th consecutive sold out show. Because you had been touring, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so we had jobs. I think we had our first eight or nine shows booked before I had the music ready. So I had a gun to my head. Oh, yeah. you better get it ready. Yeah, we were scrambling in March, and the debut was yeah. uh, last April, April 6th. So we've had to step up, so. and she was scrambling to get her costumes ready. I'm scrambling, and then I have to learn how to do Richard and grow my hair a little longer and work on the look and have my suit made and grow four inches. He's taller than me. And then there's and then another component of this show is there's um, there's video projections. So and that's something that I've always done with this show. But, of course, for this new show, it was a whole new type of video projections that I would be using. So that's my department and doing the research to find the images that I wanted to use. And um, the show open, or after the, the Herb Alpert and Tijuana Brass opener, there's um, a six minute trivia video. And so um, the audience always loves that, but the, the um, what, was required to put that together was it was a lot of research and yeah. a, the a lot of work. Did that. <laughs> the Carpenters did that in their show and what's really touching about it is particularly at the end mm -hmm. he shows a lot of family videos at, or family uh, photos. Right, there's at, a big the um, video or photo montage at the end yeah, of the show. Yeah, the, at the mm -hmm. closing of the show so we embedded our own family with that and I had to rescore the music because we had twice as many photos to tell our story as well as theirs. And I think for me the most flattering one word compliment that we get about our show when people leave is that it's very emotional. There's people who really they get all teary eyed. Teary -eyed. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a very emotional show as well as entertaining and energetic as well. Just talking about it makes me emotional already. Yeah. <laughs> about your accomplishments. You yeah. had mentioned earlier about the, your experience and you're the very first uh, Karen Carpenter tribute artist with Legends in Concert. Tell us right. about that experience. Yeah, so uh, like, like I mentioned earlier, um, my initial trip out to Las Vegas um, just over two years ago was um, for the prospect of auditioning for Legends in Concert. I actually, um, I, I did a quick kind of meet and greet with um, some of the executives of Legends in Concert during that trip, but it wasn't until after I moved here, um, I moved here in April of 2018, and then my actual audition didn't happen until August of 2018. So it was a very, it was a long process, and um, by September of 2018, I, I got the answer from them that yes, they wanted to have me on as their first Karen Carpenter, and that they would be sending me to Myrtle Beach a year from then. So I just, um, a couple months ago, finished a two-month contract with Legends in Concert at their Myrtle Beach well, Theater. Well, congratulations. So yeah. it was, it was a, a wonderful experience, and everybody um, in the Legends in Concert family was just wonderful to work with. And I did about 60 shows while I was there. Ned came out to visit three times. and. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, it's, it's it was an honor for me to help. I, I work with their uh, arranger, and right. here's her scores, here's what we have, and you know, helping them collaborate to, to put the music together with the band. And I flew in, I saw the show like five times, mm -hmm. I think, and I'm in the <laughs> audience, yay, so proud cheering her on, you know. So. But what's the future plan for, for your duo? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, your, <laughs> what are your future plans for the Carpenter's Tribute Concert, yeah. a recreation of the 1976 UK tour? Well, we have uh, currently about 18 shows booked this year for 2020. Right. With more on the way. More mm -hmm. on the way. Uh, we're actually on a flight to Florida tomorrow. We're playing north of Orlando in Mount Dora, Florida. That's almost sold out. We're in uh, Folsom, California, n near Sacramento in June, and that almost, it's close to selling out now. It's only been for sale for about three weeks, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And uh, we're in, we have two shows in Pennsylvania in September. September. But then backing and up to August, we're gonna be in Wisconsin. 
Right. For two shows at the New Belfry Jer New Theater. Jersey yeah. in November, and we have a, a, a we're putting together a new uh, Christmas show. Oh, right, yeah. that's a big that we're doing a big thing in Texas. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We when we sold out the, the uh, Palace Theater. Uh, and Grapevine near between Dallas and Fort Worth. Mm -hmm. We're there. Uh, we're doing two, three shows. Three shows at the Palace Theater. And then we're off to Waco, Texas, to the Hippodrome, to do that. And uh, long term, uh, we both have the same vision for the show. Of course, we we would love to uh, step it up a notch and maybe perform with orchestras. And uh, there's a lot of pops orchestras and stuff. It would be nice to have her singing. We've only just begun with the strings and, and everything, you know, and yeah. that stuff takes, it takes a lot of time and even more work in preparing the orchestrations and, and getting that ready and, and the new promo video. And not to mention our CD, we have an interesting concept. She, um, we just finished a recording of her doing Superstar wow. in Spanish and in Spanish English. Version. Mm -hmm. wow. Which is something that the Carpenters yeah. never actually did that. They did record um, some of their songs in other languages, like Sing. Yeah. Um, but this is kind of our yeah. our And maybe next classic. year we'll do it in Tagalog. What do you think? Oh, why not? <laughs> yeah, that would be interesting. <laughs> what are your favorite uh, songs by the Carpenters? Um, well, my, my favorite, that's always a difficult um, question to answer because there's they had so many wonderful songs um, but my, my favorite song probably has to be I need to be in love and that was actually Karen's favorite carpenter song too yeah, yeah. Awesome. Mine, mine has to be superstar superstar yeah. <laughs> I love that one too <laughs> I wish we had more time but if you were uh, to give any suggestion or words of wisdom to anyone who would like to be a tribute artist or just an accomplished musician what would it be um, mm. I I, my advice would be if you know if, if it's something that you love doing then just keep keep on working on it and, and treat it treat it like you know not like a job but you know it's something that you love and then you just you do a little bit every day and before you know it it starts taking shape and you start going places with it I mean I never dreamed when I started my show um, that all of this would happen it it was really meant to just be like a one-time thing and I'm like, oh, I, I really like this. I'm just gonna see where it goes. And you just, you keep on, you make connections with people and then one thing leads to another. Yeah. A few so words of persistence. I, I would say to always be true to your art, whatever your passion and that path is, to just stay on that path. There will be people that will try to take you off that path. And like a lot of artists for us, the most rewarding thing what we do and the, I hate to use the word easiest but when we're doing a show the least difficult thing for us is doing the music the work is dealing with personalities and dealing with trying to get the next job and then talking with the agents and the contracts and the business side of it don't let any of that or you just be, there, there was a really good book I read recently called The Power of Relentless. And it is very important to be relentless when you go after it. And if you do that, you, you'll get there. I agree. Please invite everyone and where can people find you? Well, they can find us on our website, which is www.carpenterstributeconcert.com. That's Carpenters with an S, plural. Yeah, it'll show where we're performing, our tour page. There's a lot of cities that we don't put on the page yet till tickets are available for sale. But just keep checking with that. And, of course, you can find us on uh, Facebook also. Mm -hmm. And um, the, the, one of the big takeaways I wanted to mention also is that to watch our show, it's not just the powerful ballads they did. It's a lot of entertaining. The drum feature, the classical, we, enter, we bring people off, off from the stage to the, the comedy. audience. There's a lot of fun yeah. stuff, so, so I think they would be very pleased with that. Well, thank you so much for this rare opportunity. We wish you continued success. And, thank uh, you. Good luck. Thank, thank you, you so much, Ms. Salama. We've only just begun to live. The definitive show celebrating the music and history of the famed brother sister duo. Sally Olson is Karen Carpenter. 
unsurpassed in her uncanny representation, Sally's performance honors the cherished legacy of the 1970s songstress. Don't you remember you told me you love me, baby? You said you'd be coming back this way again, baby. for a trip down memory lane as the Carpenters Tribute Concert takes you back to the 70s with an evening filled with love, music, and excitement. Vegas Lives. I would like to thank our wardrobe sponsor, Anne Fontaine. Anne Fontaine is located at the Fordham Shops in Caesars Palace. Thank you so much to the general manager, Ms. Anna Billings. Catch me again next week as I feature another amazingly talented personalities here on Vegas Vibes. Take care, everyone, and God bless. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode as much as I did sharing the vibes of Vegas. And time really flies when you're having a grand time. Promise to join me again next week on this same fabulous ACTV channel. And to all our global viewers out there, let me remind you that Las Vegas is not just about the world-renowned strip or the famous Fremont Street experience in the vibrant downtown district. It has real people, a lot of them musicians, live entertainers, and those involved in the world of pageantry. And to the people here in the Valley who work hard each day to make Las Vegas a global brand, I would like to feature you and your cool story right here on Vegas Vibes, either on the ACTV studios or at your workplace. If you believe that's you, please email me now at esmeralda at actvlv.com. Once again, I'm your host, Esmeralda Padilla Gould. Thanks for watching. Thank you. TV.